Freedom Day. I want you guys to put that on the chat box. It's Freedom Day today. And um, I want to feel your energy. You know, today we're going to bring in a lot of content. I don't see people putting it's Freedom Day on the chat, guys. We have to feel this. I know it's Thursday. I know we're, you know, towards the tail end of the year. And everybody is losing their their vibe for work because all the holidays are coming in so we need to you know shake this off it is freedom day today and today we are going to talk about ways for you and your customers to achieve their freedom because essentially freedom can be achieved through ways of monitoring and working with your money so today we're going to have Alain Espinar he is a regional manager for PFS investments he's a financial coach his network it encompasses about 100 people, and he has been able to help over 500 people throughout the last three years that he's been focusing on this and helping people with their financial future. And um, essentially, this is not just something that is, is only for your customers, but it's something that can help you. So it's important to kind of look at the big picture on what this can do for your customers to be able to help you financially and also for you independently. So um, Align, um, introduce yourself uh, and uh, let's get started. Well, hello everybody. Uh, thank you again uh, for having me. I appreciate uh, you inviting me to this, uh, um, to the Freedom Day. I've been, uh, you know, I know David for a few years now. It's over five years that I've known David. He's a good friend of mine, not only. Uh, I'm going to be telling you guys my story. So I know you were expecting a big guy with a beard. It's, it's not him today. It's me. <laughs> and I, I don't have the cool background, the black background that he has. So uh, I'm going to be explaining to you a few things that I believe that actually is going to work out better um, for, for your customers, because there's a lot of... Uh, wrongful information out there when it comes to financial planning. But before I go into that, I want to say thank you to Jen and David for inviting me here. And also, I want to uh, tell you guys, if you haven't signed up for the book launch of your great coach, David Kors, in November 1st, he's going to be doing a webinar at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So make sure you register for that. He's going to be it's going to be an awesome book. I know David, he, when he does something, uh, he's, he's going big. So I know this book is going to be changing a lot of lives. So make sure you do that. Okay. So Michael, now... can you put that link on the chat as well? I want you guys to please maintain engagement on the chat, open your chat. You know, we want to see and feel you, you know, your, your, your thoughts on everything that's happening and any questions you might have throughout there. And that way Align can, can better communicate with you guys. Yeah. Thank you. So uh forgive my english sometimes it's not i'm not like a hundred percent and <laughs> that's not my first language so to tell you a little bit about me and why you should like work with me uh for your clients or even yourself i've been in the country in the united states for seven years and a half i was born and raised in cuba and the reason i went into finances is because i i can't complain about my my childhood i i had a nice ch childhood in cuba you know, we we went to hotel. We had I had nice meals. Most people in Cuba can have that, and the reason I was able to have that is because my father was traveling all around to make some money for us, and I appreciate that. So, well, what happened is that I don't know how many of you know that many people make a lot of money, but they end up with no money at the end of the year, or in like 20, 30 years when it comes to retirement, they have no money. So that's what happened to my father. And I was raised watching that, that he was making a lot of money, but he never kept a dime. So I wanted to do something different. And the other day I was actually talking to a friend that it doesn't matter how much money you're making, it's how much you're keeping and what are you doing with that money? So like Jen said, I, I wanna be engaging with you guys on the, on the chat. So type yes, if you think we're living in a country where learning about finances is important. Type yes in the chat if you think that, that finances is important to learn in this country, especially in the United States. Okay, so let me uh, tell you a little bit more. So when I came to this country, I actually uh, 
Of course, I didn't have a financial education or anything like that. So I went to work at the AC Penny, many hotels, and also at, in a renaissance in Fort Lauderdale. And when I came in here, a, cousins, a couple of cousins of mine, they actually, uh, I went to live with them. They were 72 years old and they were Cubans too, but they've been in the country for over 50 years. So they were living in a nice house, three bedroom, two bathrooms. It was worth at the time in Miramar, Vizcaya, for you realtors, you know, uh, where this is. It was $370,000 at that time. That was back in 2016. So, um, so what happened was that I was living with them for 10 months, and then I actually went uh, and I, independent, I went independent by myself after 10 months. And they were living in a nice house. But after two years, in 2018, they had to sell because they had not enough money to maintain that, that house and inflation started, started hurting them. So they had to sell, buy an, a condo, 55 plus community. They bought that condo. Then in 2020, they had to sell again. And now they're living in Okeechobee in a trailer. They're 75 years old now, like 78, something like that. And they had to sell because they had no money to actually maintain all of those uh, properties they have before and the expenses. Why this did happen? Well, a couple of things. First of all, they never saved for retirement. Second of all, they thought that the social security was gonna be enough and social security was never intended to be the only source of income when you retire, it's only a supplement. So my cousin, she was a teacher for 42 years for uh, in the United States and the, pay, the, the social security she's getting is only $1,200 a month, which is nothing. Who can live off that? So, but she never saved, so they had to sell all of those properties. So that's a few reasons why I got into finances because I'm a strong believer that if you learn how to manage money and you learn financial literacy, you're gonna do a lot better. And actually what I'm gonna be showing you guys today is gonna help you. It, or it could help your clients too, because um, I haven't mentioned this, but in 2018, I got my real estate license and that's when I got, I met David. I was actually part of, part of David's team for a while. He actually, the coach himself coached me. <laughs> so I learned a lot about real estate with him. And I learned also that we live in a country where most people don't have enough money to buy a house or they don't know what to do. So. Let me ask you this question. How many times you have had a buyer who says, hey, I wanna buy a house, but I got 10 bucks in my bank account. Or, hey, I wanna buy a house, but my credit score is 500. So type yes, if you ever have this problem before, they have $2,000, they don't have enough for the down payment. Type yes in the chat if that has happened to you. Now, my question to you is what do you do with them? What are you doing with those clients? Because myself, when I used to do real estate full time, I used to tell them, hey, you need to save more and you need to pay down your debts, but they don't know how to do that. So I didn't have a plan for them. Now I, yeah, yeah, exactly. You can refer them out to, to the mortgage lender. The thing with the mortgage lenders is that I'm gonna be teaching, teaching you some cool stuff today that you could help your client this way, actually. Because most, um, what happened with most mortgage lenders is that they try to like, which car you're gonna pay first to actually qualify, pre-qualify for the mortgage. And, and that's good, but sometimes it's not enough. And the down payment is also uh, hard to save when you don't have enough money. Now, uh, when I got um, that real estate license, I started having a lot of people like that. And then I realized I have to, up with a plan and that's when i actually in 2020 i got my uh financial licenses so and i joined uh, a company which is a pfs investments i'm gonna be telling you a little bit about the company because of course if you're gonna be working with me you not you gotta know which company i'm affiliated to in the in the financial world it works exactly the same as the real estate world you just affiliate with a broker you choose which one and then they Whatever they offer is what we have to offer for people. And I'm gonna to explain to you why I chose this company. So I'm gonna actually start sharing my screen uh, to tell you a little bit about our company. 
So have you ever heard about a company type this in the chat or no? If you have ever heard about Primerica before? I just want to know who I'm talking to in the audience and what I'm going to need to be explaining today. So type yes if you have ever heard of Primerica before in the chat or no if you have not. Okay, awesome. So a lot of few people says yes, a few people says no. So Primerica is actually the largest financial services marketing company in North America. We have about over 130,000 licensed representatives who are listed on the New York Stock Exchange. And we have been delivering freedom for families since 1977. That's 46 years in the market. So we have over 5.7 million life insured and approximately 2.7 million investment clients with us. So let me ask you uh, a question before I continue. <clears throat> Why did you get into real estate? Like type in two words, like time freedom, financial freedom, helping people, whatever. So why did you get into real estate? Why are you still doing real estate today? Why are you looking to achieve with real estate? So type in the, in the chat, uh, why did you get into real estate? When I first got into real estate, it, it's because, it was because I, I wanted to achieve financial freedom. Okay, so I would always have a job at any age. Okay, that's good. Anybody else? Wanted to be famous on a TV show. <laughs> I love property and its ability to create generational wealth. Awesome. I love my freedom. Great. Awesome. Okay. So that's what, that's it. That's awesome. Freedom and wealth to earn extra income. Great. Great. So um, here's the thing. If you're not building something and you're not keeping your money, you're not investing your money, you're not saving for the future. You're going to be always chasing the next sale. And I don't know about you, but in, in the few years that I did real estate, I actually uh, saw a lot of people, 80 years old people, still selling real estate because they didn't do enough. And I still see, I, I go to networking events and they're old people, they're like 80, 80 something years old, still doing real estate because they didn't, they never saved. And Real estate, you got good commissions, but it's not about the good commission, it's how much you're keeping. So I'm going to be talking to you about that too. So a little bit more about uh, Primerica. We actually, last year, we were named the number one most trusted life insurance company by Investor Business Daily, and the number three most trusted financial company by Investor Business Daily. And we have gotten a lot of awards over the years. Forbes says we are the America best insurance company. We are uh, Forbes again in 2021, 2022, the best employer, Fortune, we're a Fortune 1000 company. We always receive the Dalbar, that's a mutual fund service award, that's for investments. Um, the America most trustworthy financial company. So we have many awards and I, I just wanted to let you know why you should actually work with us and a little bit of credibility. Also, for a little while, for 20 years, we were the financial advisors who represented Citigroup. Many of you guys probably know Citibank, City Mortgage, Citigroup. For over 20 years, we were the financial advisors representing that company. And in 2010 is when we decided to go independent. And that's when we went public in the, in the stock market. So let's continue over here. And <clears throat> So these are some of the issues we have today in uh, in the United States when it comes to finances. About 25% of American workers have less than $10,000 in retirement savings. This is actually really, really bad. And it's becoming even worse because of inflation. People have no money to, to keep up with inflation and they have no money to save. But nearly 60 of Americans say they worry more about running out of money in retirement than debt. That's crazy. That's crazy. But nearly half, like 48% of Americans had no life insurance coverage in 2021. But 100 million households have no life insurance coverage at all or have less coverage than they need. The average American has $90,000 in consumer debt including credit cards, 
and personal loans, auto and mortgage loans, and student debt. 42% of U.S. adults say they've gone deeper into debt during the pandemic. We, we all know this because in 2020, and you, you're a realtor, you you're, see what's going on with the mortgage interest rates, you see what's going on with the credit card debt. So actually, almost four in 10 Americans will have difficulty finding $1,000 for an emergency. That's why so many people are going to the credit cards and using the credit cards to actually move ahead. And sometimes you're going to find difficulties with your clients that they they have the debt to income ratio is too high. So I'm going to be talking about that today. 64% of workers live paycheck to paycheck. Now, the consumer credit card debt in the United States just hit a staggering record of $1 trillion. Overall, the national average credit card debt among card holders with unpaid balances in December 2022 was $7,000. This includes the debts uh, from bank cards and retail cards. So that means that people are not talking about it, but every time you're talking to a person, the chances are they have $7,000 at least in credit card debts. And that is slowing their financial growth. It, it might hurt you as a realtor that that's why so many people are not buying now and also because of the interest rates too. Now, what about Florida? Florida will rank six, six number six. The average credit card debt is $8,500 in Florida. And look at the average APR, 24%. <laughs> 20%, 22%. There are some credit cards that are actually 30%. And that's actually hurtful for people. Now, let me ask you a question. Many people have uh, financial uh, issues. Why do you think most people face financial issues? Or what do you think is the number one, one reason people face financial problems? Like, credit card, they can pay the rent, they can pay the mortgage, they can buy a house. What is the number one reason? Type it in the chat in two words. Why do you think is the number one reason that people face financial issues? Why have we come into that? No vision. Okay. So like they're not preparing. Lack of education, live beyond their finances. Okay. What else? Okay, so I don't know if you have noticed, but when you go to school, they teach you a lot about a lot of things, but never about money. Have you ever noticed that? They never teach you about money in school. So this is a problem for the Americans. We are not taught in school how to manage our own money. And if we are taught something about finances, it's how to get in debt, how to manage debt. So they, what they want is, all of us drowning in debt because that's what the system is built for, not how we can actually create wealth because they want to control us. So, but most people are facing financial issues. And when they are actually facing these problems, they most of them go online and they say, How can I get rid of debt? How can I talk to a financial advisor? And this is what happened. If you're drowning, drowning in debts and you want to talk to a financial advisor, then this is what's going to come up on, on Google. So the hourly fee is $200 to $400 for a financial advisor. <clears throat> for plan fee is between $1,000 to $3,000. <clears throat> and this is actually for um, from their wallet. So <clears throat> what's going on is that most people are facing financial issues, but they can't afford a financial advisor. So what are they going to do? They're going to try to look up, oh, how can I get rid of my desk on my own then? And this is what's going to happen. A lot of debt relief companies, debt consolidation, credit repair companies, and all of that is going to only slow their potential financial growth because debt consolidation is going to hurt their credit even more Credit card companies, most of them are not doing a good job and most of them are illegal because what they're doing sometimes is illegal. They're trying to fight for the credit cards and saying that that's not my customer's credit card, like like doing a letter representing you or 
saying it is you, but they're doing the letter that's illegal. I don't know if you knew that, but it is. So we as financial advisors, we actually don't do this kind of stuff. We don't do debt consolidation. We don't do that. That's for companies who are trying to and understand this. You don't want all another company controlling your money. Like they're going to decide when they're going to pay. You're depending on them. So you don't want to be sending your clients to credit, credit repairs or debt consolidation. I actually have a solution for that today. And this is the other thing. The retirement problem. On average, people who don't use a financial advisor have around forty-five thousand dollars in retirement. In comparison to those who have written a plan prepared by a professional advisor, half about two hundred thousand dollars saved for retirement. Is that a, a big difference or no? I guess if you think that is a big difference to work with a financial advisor, in the chat. So what's going on is that. You can't afford a financial advisor, or you don't know what a financial advisor is for, but you actually know it's good. So let me ask you this question. Do you think work, working with a financial advisor as a realtor or as a worker, as an employee, as a business person, it will be good for you? Type yes in the chat. If you think, well, anybody working with a financial advisor is gonna be better off than not having a financial advisor, especially if you're not a financial advisor yourself. Type yes in the, in the chat if you think it will be helpful for you. All right, let's use those chats. Let's use those chats, just those chats. Okay, awesome. Okay, I have one who handles my array. Okay, perfect. I think everyone should have a financial advisor. Great. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how we can help you, how we can help your clients, okay? So the first thing is control the things you can. This is what you should be doing with your real estate business, and you actually should, you, you should already have your business plan for 2024 as a real estate agent. If you have not done it, get in touch with Davey because he's great at this. And he's going to help you with a business plan. But if you have not done it, you're late. You should have done that in October, like at the beginning in October, not now that it's almost November. But for finances, it's the same. You should have a plan stated for 2024 since now. So starting today, yeah. So you cannot control the future of the social security. We don't know what's going to happen for that. Uh, to that. You cannot control your employer for those who have a uh, and employment uh, on the side. You cannot control what's gonna happen to taxes, inflation, rising costs, and the risk of a single investment. But you can control saving for retirement, other source of income like you guys are doing of real estate, ways to reduce your taxes, maximizing your savings, saving more, and diversifying your investment choices, your investment portfolio. So. Type yes in the chat if you would like to retire early or at least have the chance to decide if you work or not because you're free now. You're a financial free person. Type yes in the chat if you wanted to retire early. And early means before 62, 50 years old, 55. So type yes in the chat. Okay, so retirement is an amount of money. Retirement is not an age. Most people are thinking, when I get to 62, when I get to 67 years old, I'm going to retire. Guess what? Retirement is not an age. Retirement is an amount of money. Why? Because when you accumulate enough money in an investment account or you have enough passive income coming in, that is going to cover all your expenses, everything that you, that you have ever have dreamed of, then you can retire. It doesn't matter if you're 40 years old or you're 50 years old. If you're 40 years old and you want to retire, you got enough money safe and you're going to pay yourself or you have enough passive income coming in, you can retire. And then you're going to work if you want to work because you're passionate about it, not because you need to work. You're not going to be chasing all your life sale after, after sale out there. Now, goal setting. These are some of the stuff, some of the tips we always give to our clients. List your goals and you got to be really, really specific about it. Like describe them in detail, whether big or small, current or future. It doesn't matter if it's a goal for the next two months or if it's a goal for the next 10 years. 
Number two is get personal. Write down why you're motivated to achieve it. What's your why? Why? That's why I, I asked you, why did you get into real estate? If, is it because you want to help people, time freedom, because you love the process? So write down if it's because you like to help people, how many people you want to help in the next year, in 2024. If it's because you want to achieve financial freedom, guess what? You need to know the financial freedom formula, which I know. And I can share that with you. What is the financial freedom formula? How many of you guys would, would like to know the financial freedom formula? Type this in the, in the chat. The financial, there's actually a formula, a mathematical formula for financial freedom. Type yes in the chat if you want to learn that. Okay. So, number three is prioritize your list, which are easier, more attainable, and then you better work your way up. Create a timeline. You got to be specific on the time that you want to achieve that because I want to make more money. That's not specific, but I, wa I want to make more money next year. Yeah, but in, in what period of time you want to make more and for how long and how you're going to grow. And do the math, how much money you need to save. And save is more like when you're talking to a financial advisor, it's saving and investing, okay? Take yourself first. Most people, most people, like over 90% of the people, when they receive a check, what are they going to do? They're going to pay the rent or the mortgage. They're going to pay off the debt. They're going to pay the, the electricity. They're going to pay everything else but themselves. Okay, so that's the number one philosophy you got to get today. Pay yourself first. What does that mean? For every check you get, you're going to pay yourself first. You're going to put money away. You're going to put money for uh, a retirement account or an investment account, a short-term investment account, or in an emergency account. And that's actually what you should have. Everybody, every single person who, who uh, is dealing with money should have three types of basic accounts. The emergency account, do we know? Let me ask you this, answer in the chat. Do we know when an emergency is coming? Yes or no? Do we know when an emergency is coming? Like, no, no, of course not. So that's why that's why it's called an emergency. Now, we should have a minimum of three months of income for any emergency, whether it's a medical emergency or you don't sell real estate the next three months or you get fired at your job or you get a flat tire, whatever an emergency is, you're going to have money saved for that emergency. That emergency got to be in your savings account. You're not going to invest that anywhere. You're only going to have it in your account, in your savings account. Well, I'm going to be talking about the savings account in a little bit. Now, you, you should have also a short-term account. This is more like an investment for short-term, okay? Like in three, five years, you want to achieve something, you're going to create an investment account, an investment portfolio to achieve that in the next three, five years. And then the wealth building account, all of you said, or many of you said, I got into real estate because of wealth creation, because of building generational wealth. Well, guess what? You have a few ways to create wealth all in real estate. And have you ever heard of never put all your money in one basket? Well, you're never gonna put all your money in real estate. So you have to have investment accounts, real estate, and other stuff too, okay? Because if the market goes down, but you have investment accounts that protects you against the, the, mark, against the market going down, now you're going to be good. You're not going to be like a lot of people screaming, oh, the market's down, the real estate is down, and I'm lost. That's for uneducated people. Educated people are happy when the market is down, and you're going to learn in a few why pay off debt oh this is huge we don't do debt consolidation we don't do credit repair we don't do any of that this is how we can help your client this is how we can help you if you have debt so do you know if you made a one time eight thousand dollars credit card purchase with an 18 percent interest rate and this is low okay right now it's 25 30 percent Let's say it's 18. With no new purchases and make the minimum payments, it would take at least 10 years to pay off and you would end up paying more than $2,000 in interest charges. Do you know this? Type yes in the chat or no. I want to know who I'm talking to and 
how educated you are guys in the credit card part and the debt part. So type yes in the chat if you knew this or if you know how this works. All right, so let's go, let's go. Okay, rule 72, that's coming, that's coming. <laughs> that's coming up. All right, so do you know the difference between a revolving debt and a fixed debt? Let's use the chat. Do you know the difference between the re a revolving debt and a fixed debt? Type yes or no in the chat if you know this. Okay. All right. Who else? Who else? We got over 23 people here in the chat, in the, in the Zoom. All right. So this is what's going on. For a revolving debt, if you have $17,000 at 18%, that's gonna be a payment of $595 a month, and you're gonna end up paying $1,200, $12,000 in interest. And that's gonna take you 17 years to pay off. Fixed debt, on the other hand, same payment, $595 a month, but it's fixed. You're only gonna pay $5,000 and 300 in interest. And it's only gonna take you three years and two months. That is a huge difference. You have to know what is the difference between revolving debt and fixed debt. Now, this is an example of what we do for people and for clients. So for a person who has on average five debts, a mortgage, a car loan, three credit cards, they're gonna, and they're making 2,720 monthly payments, they're gonna end up paying off the mortgage and everything like be, being debt free in 24 years. That's without our program. And they're gonna pay on interest $212,000. However, with our program, with the debt stacking that we use, they're gonna end up paying off everything in nine years, 15 years sooner. I want you to take a look at how much they're gonna be saving, avoiding on interest, $130,000. They were paying before in total between the mortgage, the car loan, the, the credit card payments, 2,720. How much they're paying with us? 2,720, the same payment. Problem is most people don't know how to pay off their debts in the proper way, in the proper order. We do that, we actually have a system that help us do this for people. You don't have to be, oh, which car or whatever the system does it for us. I have access to that. So this is how you could get your clients to get rid of their debts faster. How is this going to help you? In two ways. This is actually going to help you in two ways. The first way is that since they're lowering the credit card debts faster or the debt faster, the debt to income ratio is going to be better and the credit score is going to be better faster. Number one, number two, they're not paying anything for this. This is free. This is free for them. So everything I do for people, the debt programs, helping them save, our plan for people is free. We don't charge, but you saw a $2,000, $3,000 for the plan or $200 hourly fee. We do it for free for people, okay? This is how we make the difference because we focus on helping the middle income class, people that are making between $30,000 to $200,000 a year. That doesn't mean I cannot work with a millionaire, I can, but that's where we focus, okay? Now, let's, let me give you an example. How else this can help you? This is a real client. This is a real client on the in the past. These people, they had a lot of debt, a lot of credit cards. Okay, and they had a mortgage and they had car, car loans too. They were gonna finish up all of their debts, mortgage and everything in 38 years and 10 months. And they were gonna end up paying, these people were actually in Texas. So the mortgage was low and uh, the, the car, I mean, the car is, was lower too. Everything was lower than here in, in Miami. So they were gonna end up paying on interest $183,000. They were making payments of 3,500, okay? The total monthly payment were 3,500. Type yes in the chat if you're following me on this. 
please, because I want you to take a look at this. Like, this is really important for you and for your client. So type yes in the chat if you are following following me on this. Okay. Okay. So let's use the chat. Where is everybody? Okay. So they were paying thirty five hundred dollars a month with our plan. They will get rid of their debt in eight years and six months, 30 years sooner, making the same payment, $3,500 a month. However, this is when this can actually help you. Let's say you have a client. How many of you, I guess in the chat, if you had this situation before, how many of you have had a client that your mortgage lender says, hey, you're good to go with a $3,000 mortgage a month. You can't qualify for $3,000 mortgage a month. And the client says to you, hey, that's all good, but I don't want to pay over $2,500. I guess in the chat, if you have this client before, they're pre-qualified for more, but they want to pay less than they pre-qualified for. I guess in the chat, if this has happened to you as a realtor. <clears throat> Let's go. Okay. So this is how this can help you. They were paying $3,500 a month, but we can tell them, hey, listen, you're paying $3,500 a month. Let's not pay too much. Let's not pay too, too much additional payment to the credit cards. Let's do $2,800 a month. And that means that you, we are putting back into the client's pocket $700 a month in this particular case. With $700 a month, that's not going to increase their income. It's not that they can qualify for more. But guess what? If you have a client that says, hey, I don't want to be paying those $3,000 that I'm pre-qualified for. I can only pay $2,500. And we bring them this, and we actually put $700 extra a month in their pockets. Guess what? Now they're gonna say, okay, yeah, let's do that $3,000. And it's gonna be better for you because now you have, you can find a better property. You have more uh, options for them. It's gonna make your job easier and it's gonna be better for them because they're gonna be getting in a better house too. And guess what? They're still getting 28 years sooner out of debt and they're still saving a lot of money in, in on interest. Okay, so it doesn't really make too much difference in the long term, but it makes a lot of difference in the short term because now they have $700 a month extra. Okay, and then, and then look at what it says down here. These people using the, the, the saving $700 a month, it says once your debts are paid off at age 45 and 42, these were a married couple, consider saving the 27 at the 2798 that was spent toward paying debt each month, this could provide an additional $2.3 million by the name of the person retirement age 67. Isn't this something I guess in the in the chat that if you think that getting rid of debt faster and actually paying that money that you were paying toward debt, you're gonna actually pay it to yourself and now you're gonna put it in investment and it's gonna grow up to 2.3 million. That's that's something. So what else do we have here for you? I want to mention the rule of 72. What is the rule of 72? I guess in the chat you know what the rule of 72 is. So the rule of 72 is actually a number that when you divide it by the percentage that your money is growing into, it's gonna give you how long it's gonna take for your money to double. For example, 72 divided by three, if you have $10,000, it's gonna take 24 years for you know for your money to grow from 10,000 to 20,000. But if it's at six percent, it's gonna take uh, only 12 years. And if it's at 12 percent, it's gonna take only six years. Now this is the problem. Most people are investing in a savings account that is giving you 0.01 percent. If it were one percent, it would take 72 years for your money to double. But it's not even 1% if you have a saving account of Bank of America or Fargo Chase, whatever. It's 0 0.01, which means 7,200 years for your money to double. That's, 
That's crazy. That's generation of people. Like, I don't know how many kids um, down the line it, you got to have so they actually see your money double. Now, how does this work? It's also important um, the, starting soon. If you invested as a parent $1,000 at 9% rate of return when your child was born at birth and you just left it there, a thousand bucks, you just left it there. For 67 years, they're going to accumulate $400,000 for their retirement. Now, how most people think, oh, my child is born, let's prepare um, the first year anniversary, a big party, spend $50,000 on that. How investment people and fun, oh, educated financial people think a thousand bucks is going to go into an investment account. It's going to grow to $400,000 at least and giving them $400,000 for their retirement plus whatever else they make. But guess what? If you are as a parent waiting until their age 16, it's going to be only a hundred thousand bucks. And if you invest at age 40, it's going to be only 11,000 bucks. Why? The power of compounding interest works this way just in the chat if you know what the power of compounding interest is type yes in the chat if you know what the power of compounding interest is okay yes okay who else who else let's go okay awesome so if you know what it is you you probably know the difference between not reinvesting and reinvesting all the money that you're earning. For example, a thousand dollars invested at birth to age 67 at a simple interest is going to be only seven thousand dollars. But if you're compounding, it's going to be four hundred thousand dollars. So it's important to actually reinvest. What is the difference between the monthly contribution that you're putting to towards your investment? So if you're putting twenty dollars in ten years, you're accum you're accumulating almost four thousand dollars if you're putting a hundred bucks you're accumulating almost twenty thousand dollars but over the years 40 years 20 bucks you're contributing twenty dollars a month for 40 years you're you're gonna accumulate ninety five thousand dollars but if you do a hundred you're gonna have four hundred and seventy thousand dollars that's a huge difference so the monthly contribution matters because there's more money to actually compound now follow me on this I guess in the chat, you would like to accumulate $1 million by 67 years old or before, or before. Type yes in the chat if you would like to accumulate $1 million. Let's go. Of course, everybody want to accumulate $1 million. So let's look at this example. If you are 25 years old and you want to accumulate $1 million to age 67, at age 67, all you have to do is invest $177 a month, okay? But if you waited until your age, age 35, now you gotta put $448 a month, more than two, two and a half times more than you will have to put. If you wait until your age 45, $1,200, nearly seven times more. If you are 55 or you wait until you're 55, now that's more than 21 times more. Let's go the other way around. Hey, Alain, I only have a hundred bucks to invest. That's all I have. Okay, good. So let's say let's see what you can do with that. If you're 25, you are gonna accumulate with a hundred bucks a month, invested at nine percent on average, five hundred and sixty-six thousand dollars at age 67. But if you wait one year and you start at age 26, you're going to leave on the table 40, almost $50,000. So you're going to end up with $50,000 less. This is what we call the high cost of waiting to start investing. So, but if you start at age 30, now you're leaving on the table $210,000. If you are starting at age 40, you're leaving on the table more than $400,000. Isn't this something that you should actually start doing this as far as you can and your clients too, so they can actually accumulate more and now they're going to have more money to invest in real estate with you guys. So this is actually what you can do for them. Yeah, you can, we can help them create a 
real estate portfolio, an investment portfolio that they actually trans, uh, transfer that money that is invested in investing accounts into physical assets like real estate. And you guys are the realtors that are going to be doing that. So let's, let's see this. The rate of return is important too because it's not the same. Uh, 3%, 6%, 9%. There's a huge difference. Let's go back to the investing when at birth, when you have a child, a thousand bucks at 3% for 67 years, it's going to be $7,000. But at 6% is going to be $55,000 and at 9% is going to be $400,000. Most people think that if they're earning twice the amount of the interest they were making before, like instead of four and a half percent, now you're making nine percent. That would probably mean that if you were going to make two hundred thousand, now you're going to make four hundred thousand. It doesn't work that way with compounding interest. Actually, there is there is a huge difference on this. Instead of ending up with one hundred and seventy-five thousand, you're going to end up with seven hundred and forty-six thousand because now you're earning a nine percent. There is more interest earning. Every single year, that account is compounding more and more and more every time. Then buy the right kind of life insurance. Listen, this is a huge topic out there. A lot of people, there are a lot of people now on TikTok and YouTube. They're all experts on this topic. And you gotta be careful on who you're listening to out there in the in the in the world and social media. Okay. So what's the purpose of of life insurance, income protection. That's all it is. It's the purpose to actually uh, have income protection and to protect your family. So what should you buy? An inexpensive term life insurance. And who should buy it? People with others depending on them. If you have kids or your client have kids and they're buying properties, you have several properties, you ought to have life insurance. Now, buy the right kind. What does that mean? We teach the philosophy of uh, decreasing responsibility. So life insurance is never intended to be an investment or anything like that. I'm going to be talking about that now, but it's a plan B. God forbid anything happens to you or to the to a client and they have young children, they have high debts, they have a house mortgage, they got a lot of debts. You are protecting them with the life insurance and life insurance is actually there for that. But actually, plan A is that you live longer, and now you have your investment, your investment accounts, your assets, and you don't need life insurance anymore. So, as time goes by, like you see in this graphic, you need less and less and less life insurance. Why? Because you're actually have less people depending on you. Your young children actually grow up, and they're independent now. You pay your your debts. Now you have this green. Uh, arrow is that you're building enough wealth so you're self-insured. You don't need life insurance your whole life. That's a misconception, and you'll be wasting money on life insurance if you got the wrong the wrong kind. Okay, so never buy life insurance as an investment. That's nothing. That's like buying life insurance, like buying a car insurance that have an investment on. How how stupid is that? So. It's the same. Never buy life insurance as an investment. It's not the. It's not what you think it is. The cash value. And these are some of the names the industry give came up with to actually try to fool the people and that they actually buy this kind of products. Cash value insurance, whole life, permanent life, universal life, variable life, index universal life, infinite banking, become your own bank. All of that. All it's doing is eating up your investments. And you know there's a huge difference if you make 3% or 9% a year, most cash value only return 3%. So this is a difference of what we do for people. Let's say you have a client, they have a life insurance, but they, they got the wrong kind, or you yourself have the wrong kind, and they have a, an index universal life. This is John and Mary. They have they are 35 years old. They have $250,000 in face amount. They're paying $250 a monthly premium. That kind of life insurance have a cash value and investment on it. Cash value at age, at age 65 is going to be $127,000. What do we do? Buy term and invest the difference. The same $251, we're going to 
buy a term of $88 and we're gonna invest the difference, which is $163. And at age 65, they're gonna end up with $300,000, okay? So isn't this a, a great difference for people? Retiring with, with $300,000 versus $127,000? This is a huge difference from them. Also, guess what? If they wanna save for a, to, for a down payment or for the next property, we could lower the investment amount and actually set aside that for the next property. So you guys can sell them the next investment property or their first home. So they, they buy a 88, dollar, a 88 term insurance and they could put the 160 for a while until they buy a property or the next investment property with you guys. Okay, so this is how we save people money so they can actually buy their properties faster. Deferring taxes. Uh, it's important to defer taxes. Many of you know about it. Type yes in the chat if you know what a retirement account is and what is it for. 401k, IRA, type yes in the chat. I just want to know who I'm talking to and if I'm, I'm going to be <clears throat> going through this really, really quick. Okay. So there is a huge difference when you're deferring taxes. In 40 years, in 40 years, if you're not deferring taxes, you're accumulating $1 million. If you are deferring taxes, contribution and, and return on investment is going to be $2.3 million. That's $1.3 million more. I don't know about you, but I want to end up with $1.3 million more when I get into retirement. So this is another way of seeing the high cost of waiting. You can look at this. A person who starts at 22 years old, <clears throat> they are contributing annually $6,500. They did that for seven years and they never put another dime into that investment account. They did that for seven years. They're going to end up with 2.4, almost $2.4 million. How much did it came out of their pockets? $52,000. Now let's take a look at this other example. This other pe person did not put one cent into their investment account for the first seven years. They started at 30 years old, but now they're contributing every single year until they are 67. Actually, they put out of their pockets $247,000. That's almost five times the other person. And guess what? They ended up with less. So the importance of starting early is critical to the financial education you guys have, and you're gonna be showing your clients. So become an owner, not a loan, and, and, and a loaner. Bypass the middleman. How many of you think that when you go into a bank and you deposit ten thousand dollars, they're just gonna leave it there in the box and they're not gonna use it? Type yes or no in the chat if you think they're gonna be doing something with that money, or they're just gonna keep it there in the box and they're not gonna do anything with it. So bypass the middleman what does that mean go directly in the, into the global economy invest yourself because if you leave your money at your bank it's a guarantee loss most people think the banks are the best institution to put their money but it's actually not and let me ask you this question how many of you have ever gone into a into a bank and in that parking lot have you ever seen a ferrari a Rolls royce a bentley like a real luxury car in a parking lot at Chase, a Bank of America, Wells Fargo. Have you ever seen that? Guess why? Guess why not? Because those people don't invest, don't have their money in a savings account or at the bank. They're investing their money. And they're actually doing it at a higher rate than inflation. And that's why it's a guarantee loss. Because if inflation is at 5%, but you're getting a 1.5%, you're going to end up with a power, a buying power of $9,635 if you have $10,000. Social Security, I already went through that. That's not the only, it, it was never intended to be the only source of income. You have to take charge of your own finances. So in the future, I may come back if you like, if you guys want to know a lot more about this. I'm going just through the surface of what we do, and you actually can learn about what the S&P 500 is, what bonds is, how you can invest in that, your clients, can, how, can you, how can you help them with that, like what is a large cap stock, a mid cap stock, a, a small cap stock, what is that, what is a value stock, a growth stock, and 
why you should invest in with a professional management company. So I don't know if you ever heard about what happened with the BP oil company uh, a few months ago. What, what happened uh, with them that they the stock went down a lot. So a professional management company actually goes and visits this uh this company and they'll start researching how they're doing and if they're actually gonna the stock is potential to go back and then as a professional management that is managing your money they're gonna be actually buying a lot of stocks and when that goes up you're making a lot of money so you're actually investing in people that many of them they're required to put their own money in those funds by the way so this is important to know that managing your own money and investing in for uh, yourself is hard and most people don't know how to manage their emotions and they don't have the knowledge but when you actually hire a professional management company this is what they do for for a living and they want you making money so they're paid for you making money okay so i um wanted to tell you also that most people think it's better to invest in a rising market like like it's always going up going up going up going up versus a fluctuating market guess what it's always better to invest in a fluctuating market why because you're gonna end up with a better average cost per share because when the market goes down you're buying more shares and then when the market goes up again you end up with more money okay so how can I help you? I can help you in three ways. I can help you, I can help your clients, and I can teach you how to help your clients. So uh, I'm gonna leave my Calendly here in the chat. I'm gonna stop sharing now. I'm gonna leave my Calendly here in the chat so you guys could actually book a, like a 15 minutes appointment with me. Remember, this is all free information. If you wanna learn more, you can actually do it. I'm more than happy to help you. And let me copy and paste it here in the chat. Give me one second. And I'm gonna leave you with my information too. So you can actually reach out to me directly if you want to. Uh, let me find the chat. Okay, so this is my Calendly uh, link. And then let me do a uh, screen share again. And this is how you can find me. You can scan the, the, the QR code. There's a lot of information in that QR code, and that's my phone number. So I'm going to give you guys a way, a gift, and I want to say thank you to David and Jane again for inviting me today. So if you're interested on a How Money Works book, that is actually a, a really, if, when you read that book, you're going to be over 60% of the population in financial education. And it's a really, really good book that is actually have a lot of graphics, it's, it's meant for people who have no education so and you can actually learn so if you're interested in getting a free pdf version of this book that's my phone number all you have to do is send me a text and say interested okay just say interested and i'm gonna send you a free copy of the pdf version of that book and i know you're gonna enjoy it. okay so i hope you guys have actually learned something today there is a lot more so before we go i want you to type in the chat what would you like of everything i just showed you today to learn more in the future if i actually come back uh we don't have a schedule yet but if i actually come back what would you learn would you like to learn more in the future investments insurance debts uh anything that you would like to learn more in the future and i'd be happy to come back and actually dive deep into what i just explained today because this is only the surface most people think this uh, financial is only saving more and um, uh, putting more money away and pay, paying the credit card debt but that's not all so there's a lot more okay that would be good all right thank you uh, thank you joseph all right, anybody else who would like to learn a little bit more about what I just showed today? So I got that now from Joseph. So I'm writing it down. I'm going to um, do something on that. Okay, anybody else? Taxes. Okay, that's good. Actually, I didn't mention this, but we have a lot of ways of saving people money on taxes, especially 
if they have a W2. So I can have, you know how I went through the debts and they actually can uh, put less money toward debts so they feel safe to actually put more uh, towards their mortgage. So I can do that. We can do also do that with the taxes. A lot of people are paying a lot of taxes that they shouldn't be paying. And we actually put back more money a month on taxes. So taxes, investments. Okay. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Bon. Okay. Awesome, guys. So I hope you got something out of this. Thank you again, David. Thank you, everybody, for listening today. And this is all I have for today. So I hope you got something. Remember, financial planning should be also part of your business planning for 2024. Okay. So, Michael, I am done uh, for, with today's presentation. Thank you all. And have a great weekend and great Thursday and Friday.